Queen Mary I is remembered as one of the most barbaric and brutal queens ever to rule over England, and she would be a woman who would burn some of her rivals in some of the most horrific ways possible. The strictly Catholic Mary I would throughout her life have a number of health problems, and she was also known for inheriting her father King Henry VIII's violent and ruthless side. But one man who would become the chief torturer of Mary I's reign was a bishop, who was known for his bloody side and streak. Join us today as we look at Bloody Mary's horrific torture, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Edmund Bonner was born around 1500, and he would study for many years to become a priest, and he was a chaplain appointed to Cardinal Wolsey, and would then mix in the royal circles during King Henry VIII's reign. But he was then involved in diplomatic missions for Henry VIII and for Thomas Cromwell, and in 1537, he became a priest and personal chaplain of the king, and was given a rather good salary. But he then became an ambassador for the English king, at the court of the French king, Francis I. But further promotions came, as he was made the Bishop of Hereford, and then the Bishop of London. Bonner would show his brutal side during Henry VIII's reign, as he would lead the fight against heretics and religious criminals, and his work would lead to him getting the nickname Bloody Bonner. He was involved in the arrest and interrogation of Anne Askew, a young female heretic who was accused during Henry VIII's reign. Anne Askew is remembered for being the only recorded woman who was tortured inside of the Tower of London, and she was brutalised on the rack. Although others operated this torture device on Anne, Edmund Bonner did interview her a number of times, and she was persuaded to sign a confession which would lead to her execution. Following Henry VIII's death on the 28th of January 1547, Edward VI came onto the throne, and the Catholic bishop would find his chances at court rather limited. He was then sent to Fleet Prison for refusing to accept the oath of supremacy, but he was then released before he was then moved to Marshall Sea Prison in 1550. It was said that on the 8th of January 1550, Bonner had his bed taken away from him by the keeper of the prison, and for eight days he only had straw to sleep on, and he refused to pay the jailer £10 for better treatment. He was then brought in front of the Privy Council to answer his refusal to accept the oath of supremacy for Edward VI, but he stayed in prison until the 5th of August 1553, and Queen Mary I, who had come onto the throne, then sent a pardon to secure the former Bishop of London's release. It was said that Mary saw just what she needed in Bonner, who threw himself into the work of persecuting the Protestants with all his energy. It's said that 200 of the martyrs of this time were personally tried and sentenced by him. Bonner was a harsh, persistent man, with no pity or compassion for the people brought before him. Nothing short of complete surrender would satisfy Bonner. So far did his rage against heresy carry him, that he is said to have called for rods and beaten stubborn witnesses himself on several occasions. Edmund Bonner was a key tool for the interrogations and torture of heretics, and Mary I would go after these religious criminals, and she would later become more ruthless and aggressive, as she would blame heretics for the fact she was believing God was punishing her for not being stronger against Protestants. This led to many people being burned all across England. But Bishop Bonner was involved in the torture and also ordeals of many before their execution, and he often performed harmful degradation ceremonies, upon those who were heretical. It was said of these, the hands were scraped with a knife to remove the holy oil with which they had been anointed. The scraping could be done either gently or roughly. The Protestants alleged that Bonner did it very roughly whenever he took part in the degradation ceremony, but this may have been Protestant propaganda, for Bonner's attitude varied between boisterous and aggressive gloating and a patient attempt to persuade heretics to recant so that their lives could be spared. The first bishop to be condemned to die by the courts during Mary I's reign was John Rogers, and Bonner was told by Rogers he had one request to make before his burning. He wanted to receive a visit from his wife, and this simple request was then rejected, and Bonner refused this, before he was then burned on the stake at Smithfield on the 4th of February 1555. More bishops were burned in the days after, including Bishop John Hooper. It was said of Hooper's execution that Hooper was brought to the stake. He had been given packages of gunpowder by the guard 
to hasten his death and lessen his suffering. These he put under his arms and between his legs. When the fire was lit, the gunpowder on Hooper went off, but even that didn't do so much good because of the wind. Even when Hooper's mouth was black and his tongue swollen, his lips continued to move until they shrank to the gums. He knocked on his breast with his hands until one of his arms fell off. Then he knocked with the other, fat, water and blood, dropping off the ends of his fingers. Hooper was in the fire for over 45 minutes, suffering patiently, even when the lower part of his body burned off and his intestines spilled out. But Bishop Bonner was on the front foot trying to stamp out high-profile heretics, and he would consider his new power over other churchmen, as he ordered the arrests of high-ranking bishops, Hugh Latimer and Nicholas Ridley. He also arrested Thomas Cranmer, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, and the former good friend of King Henry VIII. Bonner would beat, whip and assault many who were accused of heresy, before they were then sent to their burnings. He managed to break Thomas Cranmer during his imprisonment, and his treatment of him was shocking, especially as Cranmer was forced by Bonner to watch his friends Ridley and Latimer being burned at the stake. As he looked on, it was said that Cranmer fell to his knees in tears. Bishop Edmund Bonner had been personally responsible for trying and sentencing around 200 people to death at the time, and it was said he was a harsh and persistent man, with no pity or compassion for the people brought before him. He has mentioned forced many to witness their friends and families being burned in front of them. These executions of these men, and sometimes women, were said to have been some of the most barbaric in English history. For example, with Cranmer's execution, it was said to have been very tragic. One testimony of this said, When he came to the place where Hugh Latimer and Ridley had been burned before him, Cranmer knelt down briefly to pray, then undressed his shirt, which hung down to his bare feet. His head once he took off his caps was so bare there wasn't a hair on it. His beard was long and thick, covering his face, which was so grave that it moved before his friends and enemies. As the fire approached him, Cranmer put his right hand into the flames, keeping it there until everyone could see it burn before his body was touched. Cranmer was heard to cry, this unworthy right hand. He was then placed into the fire, and then was reduced to a pile of ashes. But following the death of Mary I, when Elizabeth I came onto the throne, she brought an end to the burning of heretics. But Bishop Bonner's actions had caused chaos across England, with almost 300 people being sentenced to death by being burned at the stake, with many more being tortured. It's believed Bonner personally sentenced around 200 of these people, and he witnessed the executions and took a great pride in seeing these men and women burn. On the 20th of April 1560, Bonner was sent to Marshalsea Prison, and he was held there until his death on the 5th of September 1569. It was said that, although no one had seen Bonner for over 10 years, his memory was so fresh, and he was so hated by the people, that he was buried at midnight to avoid a riot. He was a man who had brought such horror to England, and who had led a huge amount of suffering across the nation. But Bishop Edmund Bonner is remembered for being the brutal torturer of Bloody Mary I. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.